Major funding for Immortality Now was provided through an educational grant from Hotsi Vitamins. Founded in 1993 by Dr. Stephen F. Hotsi, Hotsi Vitamins is committed to delivering only the finest quality vitamins and supplements to meet your patient's needs. Now offering customized vitamin packs, Hotsi Vitamins is making it easier than ever for your patients to get well naturally. For more information, visit client.hotsivitamins.com. Hello, this is Dr. Ron Klotz, and uh, we're here with Immortality Now, another episode, and we're in Las Vegas at the uh, uh, World's Congress of Anti-Aging Medicine with Dr. Todd Lapine. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for attending, and thank you very much for presenting. Dr. Lapine's uh, uh, area of expertise is uh, the human biome. Mm -hmm. The gut microbiome. The gut microbiome. There's a lot of research being done worldwide about the human microbiome. And what you have to realize is that there are so many things that we have exposure to that affect the human microbiome. When people take diet soda, that can actually act actually as an antibiotic and kill off your microbiome. And your microbiome is like a rainforest, and the more diverse it is, the healthier you are. Now, when you say the biome, what you're really talking about is you're not you're talking about. Are you talking about the, 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 the gut itself, or are you talking about the microflora within the, the gut? The microflora, the microbiota, they call it the microbiome. It's, it's the sum totality of all the different hundreds of organisms that are in there, which are a very complex, biodiverse ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And there are, in fact, hundreds of different organisms. Oh, not yes. Just one. Absolutely, yeah. And they, I mean, they're stu they're, they're, there's learning more about them all the time. The, the human microbiome, you, you can actually categorize into three groups, sort of three major groups. Uh, but there is very much unique. So you can even take individuals who are identical twins, and they'll have similar ones, but it'll be just slightly different. And it's also dependent upon different foods that you eat. So people in Japan actually have a specific organism that helps them to digest seaweed because that's part of their diet. That's interesting. And, yeah. uh, you know, it is interesting when I travel around the world, you know, I eat things that, you know, yeah. everybody else has no problems with. <laughs> and I go home that night and I'm like, oh, my God, oh, what did I eat that for? You know, and, but everyone laughs at me. They go, oh, so funny. Uh, you, yeah. you have problems with, uh, uh, with sea slug. <laughs> you know, uh, now why didn't I ever realize that? Exactly, right, right. So it's, it's really, it's quite, it's quite unique. And the other thing that's really important um, that we are seeing in America is we're seeing an abundance of being people being overweight, obesity, diabetes. There are actually studies showing that when you have imbalances of the gut microbiome, that actually can tip you in the direction of, of having uh, insulin resistance, uh, diabetes, obesity. And yeah, thank you. I was just about to say, what is the, what does all this have to do with life expectancy, life extension, and uh, uh, you know, we certainly quality of life issues are clear. You know, if you uh, if you don't assimilate your foods properly, you're going to be setting yourself up for disease. You end up with disease. You're going to uh, cut your lifespan short. Absolutely, and and one of the I mean the key thing that causes aging or excess aging is excess inflammation. Mm -hmm. we call it inflammaging. And what can happen with the human microbiome as time goes on, depending on what you're eating and other factors. You can get disbalances or uh, uh, imbalances of the gut microbiome, which you call dysbiosis, and then that in turn can lead uh, further down the road towards leaky gut, low-grade endotoxemia, which is basically that you're always constantly having lipopolysaccharides in your blood. It's like being septic <laughs> at some level, and uh, it's been tied with multiple, uh, you know, diseases, cardiovascular disease. Um, autoimmune diseases, Alzheimer's. I mean, mm -hmm. it, the list goes on and on. Yeah, brain fog, Al skin rashes. Absolute eczema, psoriasis, you name it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, one of my sayings is, you know, uh, 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 health is paid with good intestines. <laughs> <laughs> and how do, you, how do you know? I mean, you know, it's, it's like, you know, most people feel, feel crummy all the time. You know, it's, it's, it's really sad. If you go out there and you talk to people, maybe I'm a, have a little bit of a biased sample because I'm a physician. So when I talk to people about how they feel, they feel compelled to tell me what's wrong with them. But even if I say, hey, how do you, you know, are you feeling good today? Most people say, uh, not so much. Yeah, they're not at peak performance or optimal, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is that imbalances, the gut microbiome is also associated with depression mm -hmm. and also anxiety. Right. The, dis the dysbiosis also is tied, when it's tied in with leaky gut or increased mm -hmm. intestinal permeability, that's when things get really messed up. And even kids with autism, there's a large proportion oh, yes, of kids with autism that have uh, imbalances in the gut. And there are so... One of the major treatments for autism is adjusting 
uh, the foods and the fats and the yes uh, and, and 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 the uh, you know specifically uh, trying to tailor uh, the health of the gut for maximum absorption and uh, that's that's one of the the, the most effective treatments for uh, autism that's out there that I'm aware yeah. of oh absolutely and it also the, it ties in with uh, gluten sensitivity and the sort of the, oh, epi the e epidemic of gluten sensitivity that's out there now and there's also theories about why that's going on is it higher gluten content. Is it related to glyphosates, which they spray on wheat? You know, there's a lot of, uh, of, of things, but there's, there's more, more and more people come in with digestive issues and brain issues. It's just, it's very, very common. Well, they're doing their best to, uh, to corrupt our food supply, aren't they? I mean, you know, the, with gluten sensitivity, with GMO foods, yep. with uh, the yep. pesticides that are ubiquitous. I mean, I, I just went out to try and buy uh, some grapes and try and find something healthy. I went out and I, bought, I, I was going through the grapes and the grapes, so these are red grapes. Yeah. They're supposed to be like dark red, right? Yeah. They were gray grapes. Really? They were so, so, so covered with, with pesticide. Res pesticide residue. And residue yeah. that they were literally gray. And yeah. I couldn't find any that were red. I was, it, was, it was like, oh my God, what's going on here? And that's becoming more and more common. I go out and I buy uh, produce and it's very hard, even, even what's supposedly organic, yeah. Uh, you see this coating on these, uh, you know, on, on the fruit or on the vegetables, and you literally have to spend 20 minutes washing it off. Yeah, yeah, and, and the the, uh, the the real thing about it is that the the, the pesticides um, are sort of a slow poison. Mm -hmm. And there's actually an, a study from Japan that actually looked at uh, people who had uh, levels uh, higher levels of Parkinson's. It was associated, the more fruit, the more vegetables you ate, the higher your Parkinson's. Oh, lovely. Because of a chronic, you know, it's genetically susceptible to individuals, chronic uh, problem with pesticide poisoning. Isn't that, a, isn't that a shocker? Yeah, I mean, you know, a, a neurotoxin for an insect is, is a neurotoxin for us. Yeah, it's just a matter of, 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 of the uh, concentration, isn't it? No. Yeah. Because and, that's where all the pesticides came from was uh, the World War One and World War II research into uh, nerve gas. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. The, the, probably the origins, it was, it was a nerve, exactly. Right. Nerve po gas poisoning. But getting back to the microbiome, uh, you know, it, there's, there's new ways to, out there that allow you to study it. Uh, there's lots of research uh, even on severe cases of gut dysbiosis with stool transplantation. Okay. Um, in fact, recently in my, in my talk, there was a paper that they did actually a stool transplant on a, like a dozen patients and they were actually to, uh, a, quite able to markedly reverse their uh, insulin resistance. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's dramatic. Yeah. And there's, you know, they, they're doing stool transplants now for patients with refractory uh, C. difficile colitis. Uh, there's even some uh, pioneers doing it for uh, autism and Parkinson's. So it's... Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, what's going on here? <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's, you know, the, the, and the other thing that's important is to realize is the gut microbiome actually stands outside the body. Uh, so it's, it's not part, it's really part of the planet Earth, if you will. Mm -hmm. We're this big hollow tube that sort of carries them around. Uh, and also some of the really interesting uh, l literature is that they actually can manipulate us in terms of our uh, our cr food cravings and our behaviors. Absolutely, yes. So it's my gut that's that's telling me at eleven at night, hey, hey, hey. Psst. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. You want some coffee and a donut? Feed me Seymour. Yeah. Feed me Seymour. <laughs> Feed me Seymour. <laughs> Feed me Seymour. <laughs> I know, I know. He's right on his shoulder. Yeah. He's always there. He's yeah. always ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, also the interesting thing is uh, there's a. Um, a recent paper that came out showing that your uh, gut microbiota can actually get uh, jet lagged. So when you go through, go through jet lag yourself, that actually can twist your uh, gut microbiota into creating more fat uh, bugs, if they will. There are, you know, there are certain types of bugs when they get out of balance can predispose towards obesity. So uh, over time, you will develop, because lack of sleep and such is a stressor to the body. So anytime the body's under stress, it wants to hold on to calories because it doesn't know if it's a feast or a famine out there. Uh, so it just says, you know, we better hold on to, uh, hold on to calories. Yeah, you know, that's a very interesting point. So there's not just you, there's another you. Absolutely. There's this like, you know, just like you're how many cells in the human yeah, body, a trillion, a trillion plus cells. Yeah. There's probably three trillion. Yeah, it's a hundred times, they have a hundred times more genes than, than we do and they, they there's, there's bacteria are swapping the genes all the time. It's, right. it's really, yeah. They and got a big advantage over us. Absolutely. It's like, who's in charge? 
<laughs> we know who's in charge. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay. And, I well, obey. Well, I and, obey. And, 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 and then the other thing, which I also like to say, is that, that they call the gut microbiota the commensal bacteria. And commensal means Latin for sitting down at the table with. So yeah, so I, I tell people that you know when you're making your food choices, it's not you're not just feeding yourself. You have to feed the bacteria in a healthy way, and if you don't, you're in deep doo doo, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 we've got this this other self, and it's alive. It's alive. It's alive, and it's thinking, and it's making decisions for us. It's producing vitamins and uh, toxins. Toxins. Uh, it, and also right. protects us too when it's in, when it's in balance. When it's in balance, absolutely. So I mean, we have so we have to keep it happy because if we don't keep it happy, it's going to be heck to pay. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the Clostridium C. difficile is a bacteria that always sits inside our digestive tract. So it's not like it's a bad bug, but under the certain circumstances, um, like taking antibiotics, which I, it's the, the analogy is like napalm on a rainforest. It sort of nukes a lot of the, the bugs. And then some of the bad actors will sort of sense that, and they just sort of take over. It's like you know when the cops leave the the neighborhood, the the, the crime goes up. I mean that that's sort of what happens. So what's the take home message? How do we keep our gut healthy, happy, and not doing bad things for us, and actually doing good things for us? Well, I think the the, the key thing is uh, really avoiding antibiotics unnecessarily, avoiding artificial sweeteners, um, expanding your roughage in your diet, the uh, pre the prebiotics, which are the fibers. Um, eating fermented foods, um, uh, cabbage, kimchi, uh, kefir, uh, those kinds of things. And those are really very, very powerful things to uh, help with the gut About microbiome. Sauerkraut. Pickles. Sauerkraut? Oh, absolutely. Sauerkraut. Fantastic. Absolutely. Pickles? Pickles. Well, it's not, yeah, pickles. Pickles, probably sauerkraut, raw, raw sauerkraut is probably better than pickles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's been used for, you know, indigenous countries for thousands of years as, you know, fermented foods. Right. Yeah. And so what's your uh, emergency uh, uh, therapy? You're overseas and you eat, uh, you eat something maybe you know, you're not used to and you had end up with a, a terrible bad belly. What's your emergency uh, treatment for that? That's a good question. What you do actually is prophylactically. So what you do is before you go, there's a specific bacterium called Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG, uh, which are found in probiotics. The, the, um, the brand name is Culturel. And if you take that, like maybe two or three a day before, you know, a week or so before you're going to travel, and while you're there, there's a good likelihood that you won't get, you know, Montezuma's revenge. But there is there is no magic one probiotic. It's sort of the, the symphony of the organisms in there. And there's a lot of research being done now also on soil-based organisms mm -hmm. because when you think about it, you know, we get our food through the ground, and when you pick it up, it's it's literally covered with you know, lots of different types of bacteria. Uh, in fact, there's actually, I forget the name of the soil-based organism, but there's one that can actually have the same effect on depression as uh, uh, antidepressants. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's very poor, it, it, you know, the, the, the microbiology of uh, the environment is very poorly understood in medicine. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, I can't think of, uh, of, of one doctor in a hundred who even has a clue exactly. as to what's going on. So it's new information I totally and, know. It's, uh, and it's powerful information. This is, this is powerful medicine. Absolutely powerful. It's, it is. And there's, it's, we're, you know, we're basically uh, just starting to explore this, this hidden world. It's like a Jacques Cousteau, you know, under, it's like going into this hidden world and it's a hidden world. Uh, indeed. Uh, Dr. Lapine, uh, with regard to the issue of GI health, uh, there is a ubiquitous use, I mean, widespread use uh, uh, of uh, proton pump inhibitor drugs, mm -hmm. commonly referred to as the purple pill. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's several of them out there. And, yeah. uh, and with proton pump inhibitors, what, what is the use of this inhibitor? Uh, what's the valid use of this, of this medication? You really, I mean, proton pump inhibitors, the studies are really short-term use for an acute situation like gastritis, bleeding ulcer, something like that. But the, the, the problem with the, the purple pills, if you will, is the long-term use. And what happens is lack of stomach acid causes bacteria to overgrow in the small intestine. So people can develop uh, bacterial overgrowth. Um, you can develop food allergies. Uh, you can develop leaky gut. Uh, long-term, it's also associated with osteoporosis. Uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. So there's a whole host of, of downstream effects or side effects with prolonged use of these. And heartburn is not caused by acid. So <laughs> you want to have acid in your stomach. It is completely normal to have acid in your stomach. In fact, some people with heartburn don't have enough acid. So you actually have to, have to support their acid 
in the stomach to actually get heartburn relief. Mm. Um, so, so you real, I mean, very rarely do you want to use uh, those uh, medications, and if if so, for short periods of time, and try to get people off of them. And lifestyle changes make a big difference. I mean, there's certain. I've actually seen uh, patients come to my office, and they're actually taking a medication that's actually causing their heartburn. And rather than switching the medication or stopping it, the doctor just gives them the heartburn medication. So it's like iatrogenic imperfect, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Dr. Lapine, thank you so much for being part of Immortality Now. All right, thank you for and, having me. And uh, the information is uh, of great interest to everyone. Um, in closing, I just want to ask you, what is your own personal, number one, two, and three, um, interventions for uh, achieving you know, a long and healthy life? What are you doing for yourself or that you think has the most potential? I think, I think actually uh, having for, for, uh, for uh, longevity and, and happy, healthy life, uh, probably social connections are probably one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. uh, exercising, what I call playing, you know, having fun, moving your body, jumping and running and going out and skiing or whatever. And then uh, putting in the right fuel in your body. You know, and food is energy and information. Uh, and when you feed yourself, always remember that you're feeding your gut bacteria. And there are certain, so. certain kinds of foods that they, <laughs> they need. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dr. Ron Klatz and for Immortality Now uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the A for M International Congress on Anti-Aging Medicine. I thank you for uh, viewing us. And we'll be back next month with another issue of Immortality Now. And you can uh, learn more about this topic and others at www.worldhealth.com. Net. Immortality Now is made possible in part by Hotsi Vitamins, now offering customized vitamin packs. For more information, visit client.hotsivitamins.com.